Hello and welcome back to the finish line, proudly sponsored by Hollywood Bets, the home of the Ponders Challenge, which is back on Monday. Yes, I get to be good at it again. Back on Monday for Dundalk's first meeting back this season, which is the ladies' day, which myself and himself will be up there. Please come say hello. Because <laughs> we have a load of stuff to give away. I got an email today. There's a load of stuff to give away to people. Wearing a suit and all. Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. It's ladies' day. I'm going to make an effort. Suits, we weddings, funerals and Dundalk, eh? Hey, he's, he's getting a bit late in life now. He needs to kind of nail down a filly at this stage. You know, you'll see Andrew before... Um... You'll see him from far away anyway. With the oh, jacket. I'm wearing the jacket. With the fucking jacket. I'm wearing there. the jacket. Just deny him. What jacket? The jacket. He fit right in with all the race new UK lads up there anyway. That's all I know. I'll be next to Kevin Ryan and all the boys. i just looking forward to a day at the races, watching a few races, saying hello to a few lovely ladies, and then perhaps a pint of Guinness in the lovely hotel afterwards. I have a feeling this room is not going to be quite... Crown Plaza Hotel. Crown, Crown Plaza. Plaza Hotel. Shout yes. out to the Crown Plaza Hotel. We will be there. Couple if anyone is staying there, we'll have a few points. Couple you? of points of Guinness, and I don't want none of these. Um... I swear to God, if I get a bad point of Guinness in that no, no, hotel, uh, I'm going to get. I'm not worried about the Guinness is far from my mind right now. No, it's I don't right want, on my to, mind. want any of these. You know these bloody like paper towel uh, beer mats. I want the proper beer mat. So Crown Plaza, get that sorted. A beer match you're worried about. Do you know? Do you I'm know, worried about the thing you put on top of it. I couldn't give a shit what's under it. Do you ever get that? You know, they actually do. They give them to you in the Louis Fitzgerald. The paper it's, ones. It sticks to the end of your point. It's like a Floyd. It just won't go away. I miss the Louis Fitzgerald, by the way. Um, yeah, if you're going, if you're going there as well, um, if you sign up to the account, you get free bets for the day as well, without having to put anything in. Put in your name and address into the account. Boom, boom, free bets. Uh, you got a ten euro free bet to use on. Monday. Yeah, ten euro free bet to use. Uh, look at him. Mm, what name can I use? <laughs> <laughs> might, have, might have a new email. <laughs> ten euro free bet to use on the day online, uh, and then you get another two five euro free bets, and then you get when you actually register properly, you get another five euro free bet. And if you back a winner of four to one or more, you get a free bet. That's a lot of free bets. So that's. What's going on? So if you see something like motors and we'll tell you all about it and we'll be roaming around with a camera and annoying people and shit like that. Must walk the track. I want to walk the track. It's you an old weather track. track. So yeah, Sandy you... Sandy the firm in places. You can walk it all you want. <laughs> I'm not getting walk the track. What? Does he yeah, want to I just want to walk around and see how actually long it is. I leave it while I'll I'll be somewhere else because I'm not walking You're through. You're some it. dry arse. And I'm walking through the sand. It's fucking sand. Yeah, I'm not walking through it. Get sand in my shoes. Sand in your shoes. Oh, you're Fuck some kid. On my eyes, want them fit in with the race in UK lads. Oh, I might get me bloody bronze down there. Sand in the shoes. Guarantee you come off the track. Oh, I wish I didn't walk around that now. Sand in my shoes. Like I told you so. And I, I told you talk, so. As well. Talk about going on track. How many? Every time we're up and punch down as well. Can we go out on the track and watch the co- cross country race? Go over to Ruby's Dublin. Ah, uh, my shoes might get mucky. You know what it is, Tom? This is absolute. Cod's fucking wallop because he goes, oh, I'd like to go out on the track and then he's inside watching uh, Epsom because the Derby tried to be on Epsom, Port, Suddle, everything else. Andrew, the time is gone for us to go to the track. Uh, you know, when we go over there, you'd stay there for 10 minutes then 10 minutes of the race. And then this is the back. biggest other bullshit ever. Oh yeah, we better not do that. I'll miss all the races. Yeah, some bullshit. Yeah. Who's the honest one here? Not you. You're like an old man gives out the whole time. Honestly, fantastic. Anyway. My God. Golf day. I know I have a lot of things. Yeah. You just kept concentrating this part up here. I can see that. Um, Golf day. A little bit of a hiccup with us last day or two. The wrong PayPal was on it. He texted me today, Dave. He texted me today and said, How long does it take money to go into a PayPal account? I was like, Oh, it goes in straight away. I was like, Maybe check that you know you've got the right spelling of the uh of the PayPal account. Well, no, no, not a bunch. You know, you didn't say that. I have, yeah, text I, right here. I have the text right here. You said make sure he sends it to the right PayPal. Check it was, the email. It was uh Brian Smith's PayPal email. 
Brian's yeah, you know, Brian Smith, who Brian, apparently didn't play golf since 2019, was absolutely bullshitting about it all. So Brian, he played golf with us yesterday. Brian Smith, uh, another Waterford man that's a, fa a fan of the podcast, decided he wanted to play golf for us, so we invited him along anyway. Ah, oh, jeez, I haven't played since 2019. Right, when I came around the corner and he was waiting for us, I thought it was uh, Tiger Woods, right, because the gear he had on him, you see him a mile away. From Everything. the hat to the, to the jumper with a Tremor crest on it, like golf member. The pants, I'd say, it was God the best the Nike yeah. golfing pants you've ever seen. And I was, he didn't play till 2019. He hits the first shot. I was like, it went a bit to the right hand side. It was good, though. It's like, uh, I don't know. Plucks, second shot then. He's in the rough, behind the tree, gets onto the green. Andrew's looking at me. I'm looking at Andrew. 2019, me fuck. He's playing ten Nintendo Wii or to Tiger Woods 2020. He was unbelievable. You kind of left out the moment where I stepped up next and stuck about six feet away from the hole. He says to me then, oh, I don't know my handicap. I don't know what I play off. Liar. So he is getting an 18 handicap on the golf day straight away. He was good though. Fair play, Brian. He was good. Good, good golfer. Good day. Um, right. So this is all the information. I got it read on. Um, it's the 20th of August. The tea times are between 12 o'clock in midday, obviously not night time, uh, two o'clock. It's 160 per team, so 40 euro per head for a four ball scramble. And that includes your dinner afterwards, where we will we'll all be sitting down at half six together, where all the prizes will be given out then. So you might have heard that the not prices that we announced already is all expensive pay trip to 2022 Punchestown Festival. Overnight stay in Louis Fitzgerald Hotel. Transfer over and back to the race course. And uh, yeah, yeah, breakfast as well. And then uh, trip to Henry the Bramhead's yard, courtesy of Tom and Pimlico Racing. And there'll be prizes for a close to the pin, uh, longest drive, and there'll be individual prizes uh, along with that. So what you need to do is just get your team together, then pay the, the full... Um, 160 together uh, and send it to the finishing line 2017 at gmail.com the paypal account once you do that attach your email to that so then i can send you a confirmation email and your tea time as well with that uh so yeah all the information is there and um, this there is half the places are gone already so we have another eight left might be able to stretch it to nine or 10, I'll have a talk with Waterford Castle um, if we get to that stage. But it's halfway booked up already, so... People like golf. It, golf is a good game. So, that's that done. Uh, I'm looking at my board. Tomorrow, Daily Boosts are back. So, all this week, they will be worked around uh, what we're talking about today, the new market, July Festival. Uh, Daily Boost tomorrow, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday... There is the money back special. So if one selection leaves you down, you'll get a free bet uh, credit your account the next morning before 12 o'clock or on that day. So 12 o'clock is the latest. If you don't get it, contact um, Hollywood Bets, um, their support team, and they will start it out straight away for you. Right. To the racing. We have the New Market July Festival on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. So everything is going to be based around that. And Dave is going to be reading out the odds and the uh, Runners for it. And we're going to start ooh, tomorrow at 150, which is? Uh, 150 New Market is the Bahrain Trophy Stakes, uh, Group 3. The favorite at 2 to 1 is Stowell. Um, you be our second favorite around 9 to 4. Gear up 11 to 2. Andrew's definitely going to pick him because he's a Mark Johnson horse. No, because I told you already today. Oh, Did that you? that Ben Curtis is a good jockey from the front. I said, yeah, he's going to do the same thing tomorrow oh, in the first race we meant. talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mandu. Does it tell you on about me not listening? 13 to 2, Dancing King then at 10 to 1. So, small field, but uh, a good field. This is great. I like this when you do this. I get a little break. Go on, you go ahead. You see, you got the honours today. Right, look, you're going to pick gear up, but the, the standout form is uh, you be at the uh, Godolphin horse. Charlie Appleby, flying form. James Doyle, William Buick, doesn't seem to matter. Uh, his fourth in the race that the Derby winner came out of nope. <laughs> Wait, no <laughs> yes. His third in the <laughs> his third in the race that the Derby winner came out of, and that good horse of uh, William Haggis's, who's a, a 
group or Tom, yeah. Tom is checking checking his phone checking to see the Lions match. No, to see if they're coming home. It's not. It's checking the team, are you? No, I'm just watching a replay of a horse because I forgot to I forgot to watch it earlier. Remind me to do a bet before because I need to do a bet for the match and it'll I'll be too late if we do it. Do it now. Do you know what as well, Tom? It's going to Rome. Denmark it's are going. the value. Oh, do you know what I'm saying to you? <laughs> Four to one, <laughs> nine to two. That's value in a two horse race, isn't it, Tom? Not in life. The you're all about value. Oh, and would that not be value oh, now when there's only two possible outcomes? Possibly three with a draw. No, but the Sorry. value depends on their percentage chance of winning it, and their percentage chance oh, of winning it is very low. So what therefore, the odds are representative of that. What percent is it? What you can guarantee in horse, in football is the price is right. There's so much money bet on those markets. That price is correct. With half an hour to go before the match, that price is correct. But anyway. What happened last night, Dave, before we get anywhere? Italia, Italia. Watch the board. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, that was fantastic, though. I enjoyed that last night. It's oh, a great, a great match. game. Great game of football. Uh, Alan Kerr and Adair is the standout piece of form. Lone Eagle was in that race as well. He was then second to Lone Eagle at Goodwood. Lone Eagle came out, ran a super race in the Irish Derby. Now, I think some of the three rolls are not that good. But in this lineup, I think his form is head and shoulders above the rest. I think they thought he was one of their better Colts coming into the season. Addy Air and Hurricane Lane might have progressed past him, but he's good enough to win a group two or a group three. Yeah, I agree. He's a standout form. Uh, I just think Gear Up hasn't got things right the, in his races this season. I don't know how uh, Stowell is the favourite. That baffles me. I thought you'd be. Yeah, I, I've. Full sure your beer is going to go off favours. I just think 11 to 2, 6 to 1 is a decent price for him. And um, look, he ran into Dante behind Hurricane Lane, who was won the Irish Derby. Uh, Meg Allen, who was oh, he's, she's in and out as much as the Washington high definition look has been, he's just shit now. Uh, Roman Empire, who was second at Royal Ascot. Uh, look, it's, it's a small field angle with Mark Johnson and his front runners, as you said today. Um, Ben Curtis, very good from the front, can ride him very, very well. I think they'll make the run with him. If they get the fractions right, I think he just could nick it from the front. Um, that, yeah, but I, th I think he, he'll he go very close and he has to beat you beer. Um, if your beer turns up in the form behind um, Alan Carr or Lone Eagle, he'd be very hard to beat. But I think at the price is wrong with gear up and I'm going to go with him. Tom, where are you going? Um, I'm actually with the favourite here. Um, I, I I was just watching back his run there at Ascot because I I thought it was that race, but before I went harping on about it, I just wanted to be doubly sure. And um, he he was miles back that day, and when he challenged, instead of you know, instead of waiting for another couple of strides, he Frankie pulled him out on the bend, so he fanned wide. Then um, he had to come widest of all. He was unlucky enough. By the time he got up to challenge the first couple, his running was done. Um, he finished third. He ran to a decent level there. He ran to 106. Uh, Wordsworth has then frank the form well enough. He's gone and finished third in the in the Irish Derby. Uh, well beaten by Hurricane Lane. Um, Kamari is is a, is a decent horse as well. Um, yeah, I, I I'd give him a good chance. I the um the pedigree is a is a good stay in pedigree. The dam is a half sister to a two mile horse uh, over in Australia, and he's by Zoffany, so he should stay pretty well. Um, yeah, I, I quite fancy him really. So that's three se separate selections. Three mm. separate selections. For this one. So who's the outside of the whole lot? That's yeah. Awesome. It's absolutely boiling in here. On. <laughs> this okay. is like this is like next gen's bloody sauna. We are going to yeah, it's actually a song. Roasting in here today. Oh god! I watched Jack the video this morning. Jack's talking shit about Saint Mark's Basilica. I wasn't happy about that, but there you go. Was he? I what didn't watch it. I seen it. I seen it today. I just put that. Sam knows what he's talking about. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so we're going on to the three thirty-five at Newmarket. Uh, the Princess Ooh, of Wales's horse racing friends stakes. 
a group two for the older horses. Uh, Al Azi is favourite, odds on 8 13. Sauron Priestley, 9 to 2. Highest ground, 5 to 1. Bangkok, 14 to 1. And Star Safari, 20 to 1. So another small field. Andrew. Tom. <laughs> Our, Al Azi could be about 1 to 3, he wins. Oh, that was fast. Well. I would be all about that until I seen him being a little bitch and not go past Sir Ro- or Sir Ron Priestley, your man, Pearl, Pearl Driver. Driver. Pearl, Pearl Driver. I wouldn't put it back I, going down past him. I, I, I watched it back this morning when I was here, and I went, then I went back and I looked through his form. All his wins have been on the bridle or been pushed out. Mm-hmm. That doesn't scream to me as someone who wants the battle. Every time he's been beat, he had to go through the pain barrier. He doesn't like it. And I picked out one like this last year. I can't remember who it was, but it's kind of the same profile. All his wins have been on the bridle. You know, they're niggled out, pushed out, not touched with the whip. 100% hitting the moment so wrong, please. He, I know his last two runs haven't been great, but he gets back to the form of his first two wins on the back of his break, which he beat P- Pile Driver and beat him convincingly on his second run back. He's going to be one hell of a hard horse to get past. A small field again. I know it's another Mark Johnson horse, but it's dictation. He dictate the whole thing. Um, Franny Norton, I think, is on him. I think he's going to be very, very hard to get past. Oh, I think Alazi is very beatable as well. I don't think he likes a battle. He's a, a bit of a bridal merchant from what I've seen. And uh, in his three-year-old career, he threw in a few bad runs as well. And a lot of them were when things didn't go his way. Um, Sauron Priestley, he went back up and trip at York. It's a bad run. I'd forgive that. The actual Hardwick Stakes is going to turn out to be a pretty decent piece of form. Broom has already come out one a grade one. Wonderful tonight is an absolute star mare if she gets her ground. And I wouldn't think he likes soft ground. All his wins previous are on good to firm. Um... As long as it's not soft, they don't get a big mad rain shower. I think he's an absolute unbelievable bet. He will go out in front, and no doubt Al Azi will travel like the best horse, but whether he'll go ahead with the effort, you don't know. This lad will keep going. He stays one mile six. I think it's a great bet. And you go back to his form against Pile Driver, and me and you, Tom, said Pile Driver come out the next day and probably win a, rate, a decent race at a good price. That's pretty good form. It's to me, as good as anything Al Azi has done, so I'm quite happy with uh, Sir Ron Priestley. Yeah, what I do, what I don't like about Al Azi is he actually hit the front, and he didn't want to go through with it. I know he he went a good head in front. Pearl Drive, I know he had the rail and everything to go with it, but he should have won the race. People say he was too far. Right? He wasn't too far back. He had loads of time to go past them. He had a good furlong to go past them. Key is Mark Johnson had kind of a slump there for two or three weeks as well. He's had a couple of winners. Now he's come back into form, which is about the right time for his horse to come back into form. For good always wood. in form for Goodwood. So stay on Mark Johnson now for the next couple of weeks. Okay. Friday. <laughs> We're moving on quick tonight. I have a guess there's a match on tonight. <laughs> Friday, the 2.25... The Duchess of Cambridge Stakes. A group two over six furlongs for the two-year-old fillies. The favourite is Sandrine, a 13 to 8. Hello You, 7 to 2. Oscula, 4 to 1. Flotus. Frankie Flotus, that's a great name. 13 to 2. Desert Dreamer, 12 to 1. Sadma, 12 to 1. And then 20 to 1, Bar. I'm going to do it, Tom. I just think Sandrine wins. Look, doesn't she's she's beaten the second favorite and third favorite in at um, in the Albany, beaten well, beaten beaten convincingly. There's no reason in my mind why the form be frank. Your your hopes are resting on better ground. I just think she goes and wins. Uh, and the one who I would fear is Desert Dream, but I just think I think Sandrine just wins. I was that's the way I look at it. Just not in from the Albany that I think um, Hello You and what's the name? Ascula. Ascula will um, overturn the farm. Uh, I'll go with Hello Frankie's on it. I'll go with ah, Flo- ah. Tom, get on Beth there and start laying a living daylight out of this yoke. 
Floatus, Simon and Egg Crisp for its horse. Uh, she's very impressive in her maiden at Goodwood, won first time up, and she actually went off favour for the, the Albany. Um, it can't have been her running. She won on soft at Goodwood, but it was heavy at Ascot, and it was like proper heavy. Um, it was hard to get through. With the ground different and how much they seem to think of her after she won that day, I'd give her a chance. I think she's a good price around 13 to 7 to 1. Tom, how are you thinking about this one? Uh, yeah, I I would be going with Sandrine as well. Um, yes, Tom. I think, I think the only the only things are um, good firm ground in the track, but she's won on the All Weather at, at Kempton. She's by Bobby's Kitten, who you know the majority of them have run on better ground in in the UK anyway. Um, yeah, I I think she she hammered them the last day in the Albany and. Um, Unless the track doesn't suit her, I, I don't see why she won't win. But if Andrew Bolding is running her there, I'm sure he thinks the track will suit, and uh, he's in absolutely fine form. He's he's had a he's had a great season so far. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd be sticking with her. I think she's a she's a fair enough price at nine to four. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I was looking at like as Tom said there, she literally did hammer him. She beat him by two and a quarter lengths, something like that, and she won going away. So. That was only her second run of her whole career, and I know it's the second run of most of them, but there's surely going to be another jolt of improvement out of her. Um, yeah, Dave, next race. Okay, the three thirty-five on Friday is the Falman Stakes, a Group One for the Phillies and Mayors. <laughs> this is going really fast today. <laughs> um, you get to see the three-year-old Phillies against the older Phillies as well, but there's not many decent older Phillies in this. The favourite is Alcohol Free after her win in the Coronation Stakes. Um, three to one. Snow Lantern, the lovely grey filly. It's beautiful. Uh, nine to two. Primo Baccio, 11 to two. Lady Bothorp, who's a bit of a spoofer, 13 to two. Mother Earth, Harsh. seven to one. In the Angel, 12 to one. It's a good price. Queen Power, 14 to one. And then you're going through Pretty Gorgeous, Saffron Beach, and a few other ones, uh, 14 to 1 bar. On paper, it looks a really, really good race. Uh, like you have the Carnation 1, 2, 3 in it. Um, Tom, do you think it's between the Carnation form or is there something lurking down the bottom? That was a yeah. face of a man who couldn't give a choice. <laughs> it's not even that. I, I thought I just thought this was really difficult. Um, you know, alcohol-free getting a mile on soft ground i didn't think i'd see that last year and you know i was a big fan of hers um after the day at salisbury so um I, i'd probably stick with her uh but then you've got mother earth in there who's got very good form this year lady Beaufort, um premium baccio as well as well as snow lantern it's a it's a hell of a race i can't wait to watch it i think it's a, it's going to be a brilliant race um Look, I the side of alcohol free because she's a filly I liked, but uh, I won't be having a bet in that. I don't think. Do you think she can back up her last run? I think oh, I think Oshin gave her probably one of the best rides at Royal Alaska. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see why she won't back it up though. She's got the form there. I, I don't see why she won't back it up. No, just um, asking questions. Yeah, look, I I wouldn't be having a bet in it. It's it's very very tricky. Um, yeah, it, it's very tricky, but it's a really, really good race. I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, it's it is looking, uh, probably one of the best races of the weekend. Barred a sprint, where are you going? It's very hard. Uh, I echo what Tom is saying. I don't think the older fillies have a chance of giving the three year olds weight like eight or nine pounds or whatever it is. The three from the Coronation Stakes obviously are very closely matched. But the, f the Phillies are so notoriously hard to predict because they'll throw in a bad run here and there. It's very, like, the reason the likes of a naval and so on and so forth is so amazing that they keep winning. It's, they're so hard to train at times. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if one of them runs badly and comes back the next time and, and, and runs okay. Like Slow Lantern, we were all taught she would win at York that day and she got bit. She came back out and boosted that form. I actually don't think it was that bad of a run when you look back at it. And I think the horse to be on at the price, because she should be shorter than Snow Lantern, is Primo Baccio. Good trainer. 
and the times of that race were extremely good if you follow times and furlong splits and stuff um i know jack from next channel will be all over primo Baccio. he was all over i think for ascot and she didn't run because mm -hmm. of the soft ground she's getting her ground tomorrow um she buy a pretty fast sawyer um Otad, he was an irish horse in the shamdan he's very good he was a good horse i have no idea um, <laughs> I think she's the one to be on. <laughs> Alcohol free is a very good horse. I was homing and home with Snow Lantern because I think Snow Lantern will win a big race. But when you when I went through the form, then again a second, and third time today, Primo Baccio. Uh I'm Snow Lantern all day. I'm back there in the coronation. Wasn't Sean Levy's finest moment in the saddle. Um but look, would he have won? Probably not on the day, but um, that was on the back of her run in New York where she held her breath for three quarters of the race. Literally held her breath and didn't breathe until I think it was the furlong pole. Um, so they were worried about that happening again, but they galloped her and gave her a proper piece of work and she was grand. She seemed to be fine then in the coronation and I think um, I think um, Sky Lantern won this. I could be wrong. I think she won this, and I think she didn't. She was carried halfway across the track by elusive Kate. Oh yes, and in the black Kate and yellow cars. Should have course. been thrown out. Going by the way they're doing things oh, now, yeah, is... and she wasn't thrown out. Um, and then they faced each other again later in the year, and I she think, battered her. And she battered her. So yeah, she should have won. Um, yeah, I think she's going to win this. I think there's going to be there's a lot to like about her. Her, her maiden win was very very impressive. Scratched. Uh, just forget about the race in New York. She was holding her breath. Um, and a very good run uh, in the coronation on ground that they thought was totally against her. Uh, I think on better ground, it's going to it's going to be very close between them all. But I think she might just have another jolt of improvement in her because she's a very lightly race filly. And I will go with her about five to two. Uh, Snow Lantern's about nine to two. Nine to two. I have a bit of nine to two. So that's Snow Lantern for me. We're on to Saturday. 3.15. Saturday, uh, 3.15 is the superlative stakes. Uh, group 2 for the Colts. Seven furlongs. It's usually a good race. Um, the Bab is favourite. 5-2. to two. Native Trail, 4-1. to one. Great Max, 6-1. to one. Massa Kayla, who uh, Oshian was giving a good shout to for Ascot, I think. 13-2. Uh, mm -hmm. Lucille, 7-1. to one. And then 10-1 to one Bar. Um there's a good few horses in this. It's actually one of the group races that has a few runners in it instead of the four. Like it's like a handicap. Yeah. Very hard. So go on, you go. Uh, very, very hard. I. It's not the most inspiring race for what it is. Um, but great max for me. I'm going to go with the uh, point Port Lonsdale for him, that good um, two-year-old yeah. Vaden's that won on the Saturday of Royal Ascot. He was third in the race. Uh, I'll give him a shot. Michael Bell, he wouldn't have the best horses in the world from year to year, but when he gets a good one, he can win good races with him. You saw with the the stayer he had, what was his name? Big Orange. Big Orange. And he had uh, Sariska a few years ago. So this yoke might be a decent horse. 6 1, not bad. Tom, where are you going? Um, look, it's it's a bloody two year old race, it's not my forte. Um, the only one that I'm gonna put up is um, he caught my eye at Ascars is the Habab. Is it how'd you say it, Dave? The Bab, the Bab, um, the bab. bab. sounds like yeah. the boat that's going to be out in your garden soon. Uh, yeah, he didn't get a best ride by Rob Havlin. Um, wouldn't have beaten Berkshire Shadow, I don't think, but I, I think he could have been second, if not third. Um, he was just he, he was coming with his run and he just had to get snatched up and switched. And once you do that in a race over six furlongs, you're gone. Um, he it, the rest of it is kind of open, isn't it? I went through, um, I went through the form of native trails run at Sandown, which doesn't look overly fantastic for all that. He went and bolted up by four lengths. He didn't beat too much. Um, yeah, look, and the same with Masca, uh, Mascala. Um, didn't doesn't look too much uh, on the form. Great Max was obviously fair to Ascot. Is probably the value at six to one. But yeah, look, it's a no bet race for me anyway. 
I am taking a chance with Mr. McCann. I think he's about 14 to 1. And he's 2 from 3 in his whole career. He got beat on his debut. Won on the all-weather link field. And then he took his form to the next level, winning by 2 and 3 quarter lengths from the front, beating Triple Time, who has form with the favour as well. Um, I think he's just overpriced in a race that anyone could improve. He's um, on the back of two wins, a goal from the front. Look, he's probably not going to get an easy time for it, but if he, I think, oh, who's on it? Sammy Bell or someone like that is on it. Just, um, they oh, said that's the, a horse, is it? Yeah. Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott, I knew there was a woman on it. Um, it she rode a very good race in the front the last day. Uh, keep to the same tactics, do the same again. I can't see being out in the frame between 12, 14 to 1. I think it's a good each way bet in a race that God only knows what could win it. Yeah, a very high race to call. It's like a bloody four-year-old hurdle with unraced horses. Uh, I can't wait to call to preview them. It's hard graph. <laughs> okay, on to the last race of the week that we're covering the Darley July Cup. Redemption which, time! Which is always a really good race. Good sprint, uh, a group one. Favourite is Oxted, 4-1. Uh, to one. Starman is 4-1. to one. The Dragon Symbol is 9-2. to two. The Dragon Symbol. Creative Force is six to one. Glen Shield nine to one. Art Power, who ran actually a really good race last, got sixteen to one. The low P Fernandez is back in a sprint again. Sixteen to one, mad <laughs> fucker, that fella. And then sixteen to one bar with some good horses like Chill Chill, Supremacy, Method. Uh, a really good race. Hell, just run him over any trip. Next, he'll be in the bloody. I put him over five Oh, furlongs. I need to try him hurdle next. Yeah, five furlongs. He's a lunatic. Right. Um, go on. Dragon Simba. Redemption time, yes or no? It's the same. It's the time of year for three-year-olds against all the horses. Uh, Oxford is a great horse. Uh, proved that two group one wins now. Starman is coming up again. Uh, Starman's coming up again. His form was Frank by Oxted at uh, Royal Ascot. I respect him. But I just can't see them giving six pounds to the three-year-olds. Um, Stragon symbol, he should have won. He did win the Commonwealth Cup at Royal Ascot. Has a great record coming to this race. Uh, whether it be placed horses or, or winners of it come along to this race, and usually do the business. Um, it's usually a three-year-old at this time. Dragon symbol, definitely for me. But creative force, the Godolphin horse, is an absolute weapon as well. I think him and Creative Force will be one and two. Mm. Disregarding last year's winner? Yes. Wow. Tom, where are you going? Last year's winner, or are we going for the three-year-olds? This, this is another brilliant race. Um, the, the, the Falmouth and this, I mean, I'm really looking forward to watching them. Um, some of me wants to stay with Starman, um, but I'm put off by what Dave said, the six-pound allowance of three-year-olds. Um Dragon symbol has improved and improved and improved, hasn't he? And the form of his last two runs is every bit as good as his other wins. Um, he's won on good to firm ground um, and run to a decent RPR there. So I, I can't see that being a problem. Um, him and Campanella, I know they went a long way right, but you know they were five lengths clear of the third. And um, oh, look, it should be a hell of a race. But yeah, he's probably my selection. I think he's a fair price at five to one. Oh, me. <laughs> he, he's a very fair price because if he had a run straight, right, and like what you said, Tom, with the five lane gap in a group one, I know it's against three year olds, but there's still good horses behind him. Five lane gap, if he had a run straight, he would have beaten Campanelle by probably a length. So he's six lengths ahead of those. He'd definitely be favored for this if you had a one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think this is another Dragon Symbol just wins. Like the form and how himself and Campanella went clear at Ascot, you don't win races like that by five lengths. I know it was on soft ground, but the two of them put miles clear on Campanella is proven to be a group one horse. They went so much speed from the front as well, the two of them. Um, I think, I, I just think he's he's really, really good. And they're getting the six pounds as well is going to be really hard for Oxted and um, Starman to give that away to him. 
it's just even the story to it. The story alone. It's a bit of redemption. Isn't yeah, it? it's redemption for him. I think he's just going to win. And I'll be shocked if he does be beat. I know Oxted is on the crest of the wave after winning that Ascot as well. Starman missed it, but it was on the back of a good win. Uh, Celestial Force won at Ascot as well. I'm fairly impressed. He was a group horse hiding in the handicap. Um, look, the rest of them are much and much. Glenn Shields, our power who bombed out at Ascot. Um, there's going to be a lot of pace in this again with the likes of Creative Force and our power in it. and it, la- it should actually play into the can... hands of Dragon Symbol. He'll sit behind it. Um, That's the wants... thing with him. Oshin can literally put him anywhere. Yeah, it's very fast. It's very tractable in races and all that. It just looks like it's it's made. And the thing he has going from as a three-year-old as well, going on what he done in Asuka, he stays further. Yeah. So it won't matter if they go 100 miles an hour, he'll be able to stay further than five furlongs. Can we say that about the rest of them with the amount of pace and in a probably not? Lopi Fernandez definitely stay, but he he might be the one to grab a place because he's the horse that'll be twenty to one every time he is and he'd grab a place somewhere. But I think, yeah, I think just think Dragon Symbol will be very hard to be here. The Jersey winner Kate Force is a really good horse, but he's just I do think he he probably set it up for Dragon Symbol. And I was worried all week with the the toss that Rohan was going to run. Um, but he's not running now. So mm. that form of that race at Haydock between him and Rohan, the way Rohan won the, the Woking at Royal Ascot as well, he's uh, like, he's, he, do you know he, what the thing with him though? He's he, going to go under the radar. He again. won it so easy. It's unbelievable. There are so many good horses in that race as well, but the ride he was given coming from the back, he's just put on the line in front. He could have won it by way more. Mm. And that form stood up with Dragon Symbol in the Commonwealth Cup as well. It did. Right, it's, 16 minutes to kick off. Nap's the next best. <laughs> uh, my nap is Dragon Symbol and my next best is Evere tomorrow. Tom? My nap is Sandrine and my next best is Dragon Symbol. Uh, nap, Dragon Symbol, next best, no lantern. Quick one to speak. It, it's, it's a good under- bit of racing though, isn't it? The, the sprint and uh, almost snow lantern all them in that's very very good race. The, the, Dar- the July Cup is it has been a great race for me through the years uh, of watching racing and like flat racing. Um, so many winners of I've back mm. to the US Navy flag. Remember the Dream Ahead? Remember him years ago? Yes. Um, so many other three year olds and stuff. Yeah, you do remember. <laughs> he was around the same time. <laughs> remember, he was rated the same as Frankel was in their two year old careers. They were both rated the same. And Franco was miles better. Though. Same colours? Uh, no, he was like a pink kind of colours. Hayley Turner won on Oh, yeah, pink yeah. with the green thing yeah, with Bob's here. Yeah. yeah. He, ended up he winning, won at Haydock. He ended up winning that and Haydock. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's a good horse, but Big he's Big white nowhere, face. No, yeah, nowhere yeah, near yeah, the standard sure. of Franco. But there's, it's a really good race. Mm. Really good race. I remember I waited all summer for US Navy flag to drop back to six furlongs. Um, and he dropped back in this and won, I think, 10 to 1 or something. Remember him? Done nothing since. He's in a stud. I know, but he done nothing. <laughs> he done nothing since. He's riding like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like you. See the fella only train that um, produces two of those, and they do not after it. Oh, there's loads of them like that. Or is that UF that's, needs? Uh, to... That's no name never. No, not no name never. It's Bally yeah. Light Horse. Remember, he uh, he went that fair for the for the guineas. He ba- he was something. Is it was a name like that? Air Force Blue. Air Force Blue. Yeah, that's it. Um, right. That's us, don't we're not back Sunday. There's no talking points this week because it's I'm coming home. Well, you're thinking of Warfront. Yeah, Warfront yeah. all loads oh, of group one two rows and everyone. Tom three. talking shite again. Yeah, just bypass that. It's coming home, lads. Sit back, enjoy what this is going to be up yeah. after the match, but the the bet in the match is Casper Schmeichel to be man of the match because he's going to have a worldly of a, of a game. Just after what he said. Yeah, that's what, and he he's like when he plays United. He has, he saves everything. He's, he's, the have best. he's, he's the best. He's the best. Have a worldly of a game, and Casper Dolberg is going to score. <coughs> Back it then. I am. All right, boy. It's and you're gonna, you you two are gonna look like Casper the Ghost when they win three 0 No, it won't because Italia, Italia. Oh, remember when we were on? Oh, can we talk about Jorginho's penalty before we go? Remember when we were on? No. We're on we're what are of God? We're on with next gen, and they said about like what you said about subjectives, and and the lads were going to record it and keep playing it back. This happens to me every week, Dave. Okay, Sam 
all would say in England are going to win the Euros. Everything. He's it was a Rio Ferdinand moment. And I tell you, I, when they lose later, it's going to be played back over. I know. I just gonna, I'm going to record it, send it to him every day. When if they get bit tonight, we're going into town tomorrow. We're getting them pain cannons, and they're going to get a red, white, and green one. And we're going to. Do you ever see the fella doing that? You know, he's trying to make it explode and turns around and it hits him. That's painful. Oh so, my painful. god! Did you ever painful. see that one on Facebook? I laugh every time. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> right, we're going to watch the match. Um, as al- well, not as always. We are not back this Sunday. Annual leave. Annual leave. I have to go to a confirmation. Um, and I have to go to the pub. Okay. Um, and Thomas, Thomas, be Tom, Tom Thomas will be, still still be crying cr- because Denmark are going to be England. Tom will be lying in that bed behind him, still crying. Cuddling a bottle of vino grigo. <laughs> and of course, being Tom, he'll be like, "Sure, I supported Italy anyway." I have uh, Italy back, lads. Did, 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 I, not, did I not tell you I'm a third Italian? <laughs> Can you not tell? I'll be in a very happy position after tonight. My country will either win or I win a decent amount of money, so happy days. All right, all right Declan Rice. Tom's house is you, the government uh, buildings. Every flag of Europe is playing outside. <laughs> Someone I, must win. Irish people are, cannot say that after the Irish football team. Go go down for the years of the Irish football team. Half of them are English. With you Irish, don't know if you're Irish at least they don't. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I told you, I support both. I you can. Right. You cannot support both. Of course you can. No, you can't. You, can't. you just cannot. If you support Ireland, you don't support England. It's eight hundred years of oppression. I don't Tom. start now. It was just because of. Let's put it. Out. Players don't mind playing. I don't mind players at all playing for England. It's the fucking media. Yesterday, Danny Murphy on B. You've frozen, and this is perfect timing. You see me, fun? Um. Yeah, so we're not back Sunday. There'll be no talking points, but myself and Dave will be in Dundalk on Monday. So if you're in Dundalk, come up and say hello and um, keep an eye on all of our social media because we will be posting things and we'll be recording. Um, I think for the podcast that we will, I will edit and put up during the week of next week. And we are back on Wednesday where this might look like fucking lean and tower pizza. Italia. Pizza. Italia. What? Uh, if Italy win, I'm ordering pizza here next week. Oh, you're going to be painted in green, white, and red. <laughs> so until next Wednesday, ciao, amigos. That was Spanish and Italian. I didn't know which one was going to win last night, so I had both prepared. We'll play out. It's going to Rome. It's going football's going to Rome. It's going to Rome. It's going. Right, lads, we'll see you next Wednesday. Enjoy the weekend and enjoy the rest of the football.